Hi guys and welcome to Journey to Journeyman episode number 32. And on this exciting episode we're going to make some uh, vice jaws for my shaper, my Atlas 7B shaper. And it's been a while since I've done this, well still a lot of chaos going on. This is kind of the chaos of my shop, not quite put together. Some of the South Bend is put back together, some of my Atlas, but the shaper and the mill are still not put back together. Um, we did a move from Illinois to Michigan. Uh, once I retired, we used this as a weekend home, but now this is our retirement home. And I don't mean like put out the past year, retirement home like a nursing home. This is the home we're living in during my and my wife's retirement years. It's been a while since I've put up a video, so let's take a look at this video that I shot uh, like six months ago of me making these uh, vice jaws for the shaper. I hope you enjoy. All right, guys, when I got this shaper, this vise, you know, it doesn't come with, uh, with the jaws in it. So what I'm going to do is take this leaf spring, and I am going to make a couple of jaws out of it. And the reason I'm using a leaf spring is because this is hardenable metal. It's an old, rusty leaf spring. So what I'm going to do is go anneal this, and then we're going to cut it, and we're going to make us some some vice jaws out of that. So right now, I can put marks in it. But this is uh, pretty hard stuff, so let's anneal it. Now in order to anneal this, what I did was heat it up to cherry red and then let it just air cool. So, I cut this off. Now I've got that on parallels. And now, let's shut this, set the shaper up for a five inch stroke. So let's go do that. Okay, so what we'll do is take this thing back, the back of its stroke. That looks like it right there, that's the back of the stroke. We'll loosen this. And now we'll dial this in. So we'll dial that to five. And now we'll lock this. Now we'll set the stroke length. So now we'll set the back of the stroke. So we want the back of the stroke. Let's see. That looks good about right there. We'll bring it forward a little bit. right there. Now we'll lock it down and now we'll test it and see if this gives us what we're looking for. And it does. So now we'll set up the vertical side. All right, so vertically let's do this. We'll bring the table over here. Now Lift this baby up. Bring this here. Bring this out here. Let's do a quick touch off. So I'll bring it down. There's a touch. So I'll take it out here. Well, guys, I was stuck on a couple of things here. Did, couldn't quite understand them. Uh, one is why my shaper ran faster than I saw other 7B shapers. Well, I texted, actually commented and contacted, I contacted Fred Miller. He has one on, uh, a shaper on there. And I love the way how slow his went, and so I asked him the pulley size. And he went and checked it, and it was a two inch pulley. Well, mine had a three inch pulley. And that is the reason why it was going so fast. So now that I stuck, I just went to the hardware store and got a two inch pulley. And now the belt fits correctly, the or factory belt fits correctly. And uh, now it, it goes nice and slow. So I'm extremely happy about that. So, thank you very much, Mr. Miller. Uh, 
like I said, now that now that I got that, I can work on some other stuff. All right, guys, here we go with our first cut. Let's see what happens here. Okay, that could have been a major disaster because I forgot that this side is higher. So we need to set that uh, up over here. All right. So, yeah, let's do that. All right, and that's why we check before we turn this thing on, boy. That's going to be a really light cut there. So, take two. Let's, let's see if we can cut that baby. I gotta dial in a little bit more cut. Alright, yeah, I gotta dial in some cut a little bit more. Alright, let's try it again. Take five. Yikes. Alright. All right, my touch off is, must have been horrible. So there I was. Now, some of you know that when I start that off, you know a fighter pilot story is coming. So there I was, Homestead, Florida, and we're taking off in what we call an LFE, Large Force Employment. Now this day, our LFE uh, was 24 ships. So we had 24 F-16s taking off. And I was in what we call the third go. So uh, we took off in four six ships so the first six ship had taken off i'm started watching the second uh group of guys get armed and my airplane started and just getting ready to taxi out now the reason we do it this way is is basically coordination for almost continuous takeoffs now if we all were ready um to taxi out and started at the same time there would be a bottleneck out there where they arm us now we this is a peacetime sortie, like I said, so they arm us at the end of the runway. And instead of having the airplanes all ready and parked in a line and waiting, it's more efficient to do it in stages like we did. So as the second go is taking off and I'm getting ready to taxi to get armed up, I'm watching, I think it was the number three guy. All of these are friends of mine. These are squadron mates. And all of a sudden, it looked like a strobe light happened. And now sparkles were flying everywhere. Okay, I fought a good fight, but I'm tired of fighting it. Um... I'm having to stick in two other spacers in here to put a cutting tool in. And I'm trying to figure out my geometry and all the, you know, grinding on my cutting tools. And it's costing me so much time having to try to manipulate these two other things in here. So I'm going to make me a spacer out of this. I'm going to stop doing what I'm doing here. Make me something that will be a spacer in here. So let's get started. There we go. So as soon as side project number two was finished, side project number three popped up, which was a clunking noise. And I think it says block, so I'm going to fix it. Now on the spring steel, there was mill scale, and it was extremely hard on a tool. So that's what I cut it on that side. So on the, on the other side, what I'm going to do is take this outside and grind off the mill scale. And yeah, I did a little test cut there and hope that it'll be easier on the tool. Didn't get it all, but uh, much more better. 
And just for a reference, the, um, the mill scale, when you put it on the hardness scale, it's about, oh, about five harder than kryptonite. So we're going to start uh, cutting this again. I'm going to change this tool like I saw a dude do on YouTube. I think I, his channel was The Shed, but it's kind of neat how he did it, which kind of makes sense. So he had the tool over the part. So now you don't have to worry about chasing this. And when you put the new tool in, see which way does that go? Like that. I mean that kind of shows you what you you get. I want a little bit of angle on there, so I can let's do this. There we go. Set the angle I want. Give her a little tighten. And that's kind of like your zero right now. So. I know that's got a little bit of bite to it, so what I'm going to do now is kind of add a 5,000 to see what we get. So now back to my buddy in the airplane. So what it looked like to me is like a strobe light and then confetti flying all around the back of his airplane. And that beautiful afterburner with the shock waves through it was gone. And now there was a flame shooting straight down and it would just look like burning fire pointing straight down. Okay, a couple of lessons learned real quick. Uh, first of all, I think I'm going to have to put the tool behind there because the ram has to go back a little further and this nut hits on there, I noticed. That's what that clunking noise was. The second thing is, I have no idea what happened right here on that finish. But this is okay. But this, this is, is an absolutely flawless finish right here. And what I need to do is find out why is this flawless and make everything else out here like that just a little bit more of the mill scale finish to come off but wow if I can get it to turn out like that I will be and that's a roughing tool I, I will be ecstatic if I can get the whole thing to look like that back again to my buddy in distress so I immediately got on the radio because no one said anything to him and I said hey take off leg you look like you blew something off the back of your airplane and you're on fire the tower quickly responded yeah you are on fire you're on fire now he was gaining no altitude at all as a matter of fact he was barely keeping the thing in the air and I, I watched him as long as I could go but beyond the tree line and that's when I heard the his wingman say I've got a good shoot so he had pointed it out over Biscayne Bay and ejected. And search and rescue had him plucked out of the water in less than a half an hour. Well, after the thorough investigation, it turns out a rag was left somewhere in the back of the engine uh, during an overhaul. And it created such pressure that it blew the entire afterburner off the airplane. All right, that's a, that's a much better finish on that. So I just have to figure out the right angles, the right grinds, and I can get it there. But I'll do some measuring on this thing now. Now, after I measured, of course, here comes side project number four to try to figure out the discrepancies in the measuring. So I want to eliminate the shaper vice being the problem, so I took it off. I'm going to use the shaper to get this down and measure from there and then try to correct it. But that'll be on a separate video. 
Okay, so this is what I have. This is the lowest one, so I call it the zero. This is plus two, plus two, and plus four. So the way I have it set up now is this is zero. This is plus five, and I think that's like three and three. So it's going to be, if I level it out now, right around um, a one and a half thousandths. So I think what I'll do is take another maybe one or two thousandths off of here. Maybe three. But anyway, take a few thousandths off and check it again. But I got it, like I said, the way I've done it before to, to flatten it out is to make, if it's plus four here, make that a plus four. Make that a plus two. I and mean, this is on other on another milling machine to shim it to what it shows um, what the high spots are and when you do cut it off that levels everything out so let's uh, let's give her a whirl so now back to our crash investigation there were two major things that came out of this investigation. Number one is when crew chiefs are uh, overhaul engines, they were required to take a inventory of every single tool that they had. But now they also had to make an inventory of every single rag they had. So that was the one thing that came out of it. The second thing that came out of it was some pilot equipment that changed after this accident. Okay, after a little cleanup, the way that was sitting in there was like this. So, went a thou and a half, fat on that side. Down here, three and a half, and same here. So, something I'm going to do here, I found out that, you know, these are round here. So, let me square up the top and the bottom I'll square those up hopefully that'll let me hold the tolerance a little tighter so now the pilot equipment that changed now it's funny I just start thinking about this telling this story every place that I flew the F-16 was a peninsula I flew out of Homestead Florida Florida's a peninsula I flew out of Kunsan Korea Korea's a peninsula and I flew out of Selfridge in Michigan Michigan is a peninsula. So everywhere I flew the F-16, I've flown over water. So the equipment that we fly with over water, which I've always had, was a horse collar. Okay, here's what I did. I took this little test piece and I used different cutters and different angles and different depths. Got something that was really what I liked, a nice smooth uh, texture on there and finish. And then I went on, this is the same material, and got that. And you can kind of see my reflection in there. It's, it's almost like brush stainless. And now I'm going to measure it up, and we're going to make this in device jaws. Okay, so this is what I have. Not too bad. 248.5 there, 251, 248, 249.5. So not horrible. So what I'm going to do now is get this ready and we're going to cut it in half and cut off that round part. Alright, so now I'll just go take an angle grinder with a cut off wheel, cut off this and this, and then we'll continue on with making some jaws. So this is what we came back with. Problem is, is I kind of nicked this right there so I'll probably have to take a couple thousands off that but <clears throat> let's take the two squared off sides stick it down in here and now we'll kind of level these off change the the cutter on that. I'm gonna go to something a little a little more aggressive. So the horse collar I'm talking about it we call it LPU. I can't remember what it stands for but I do believe it's life preserver life preserver unit but I can't remember. But anyway uh, if you go into water it automatically inflates and holds your head back so you don't drown. Okay 
Now that we're cutting both of them, we'll switch off from this one back to the finish cutter and slowly take it down and do finishing cuts. So when my buddy hit the water out there in Biscayne Bay, his LPU did inflate. The problem is, is it was around his head like it's supposed to, but now he could not reach his hands to his bayonets to get his mask off. And the mask hose is down in the water, so he couldn't breathe. So he had to try to start panicking. He realized he just pulled his mask down over his nose so he could breathe. And then he was able to wiggle his hand uh, to the side to release the bayonets to get his mask off. Well, after that, they made it to where the, if the LPU inflated, they called it C Wars. And I can't remember what that acronym stand for, but it, what it did is when you hit the water, your LPU's inflated and your bayonets from your mask automatically release so you wouldn't uh, drown. And that's drown or suffocate. Try to finish this baby up then. So we lost an F-16 out of it. However, we gained a lot of information and my buddy was okay. And we always said that in the squadron. So long as the pilot's okay, we can replace the airplane. So out of that bad came some real good. Wow, those are actually starting to look like vice jaws. And what I'm going to do, I don't know if this is kosher or not, but I've deburred this. I've knocked the edges off that. And I'm going to keep these two together. And just flip them over. And get these two lined up with themselves and looking marvelous. Here's what I think I'm going to do. Um, now that I got both the bottoms and the tops married up, um, what I think I'll do now is lay out the holes and once those holes are laid out, I, I'll drill them and mount it, and then I'll get the redo the the tops up here and redo the sides. Let's give that a shot. So I just laid it out and hit the drill press. Will you look at that, ladies and germs? My layout worked. Um, now that uh, these are on here, it gives me a little bit of wiggle room, and I'm uh, just going to put a countersinks in there. But before I do that, I'm going to lay out this fixed jaw one. So lay that out and get it set up like that. Starting to look promising. Uh, see, I might want to take an end mill. Somehow I need to countersink that. So I'll try to figure that out. So the way I'm locating the, to get the center point of the hole to use the end mill is I took a drill bit, lined it up on that hole, and now I'm going to countersink it. I'm going to go in half the distance, which is uh, 125. Okay, got the end mill in, and now... I'm going to go in 125. Already zeroed out that axis. And here we go. Oh, before I do, I better oil up the machine. Okay, here we go. I'll try a different end mill on that. Okay, I switched over to just a drill bit. And I'll drill it 125. And then I'll see if this will go in there and cut it. Let's give that a shot. I 
I gotta find me another 3 8 cutter. That, that just ain't cutting. What is that? Take three? I'm trying to get this thing to cut? Well, let's give it another shot. New end mill there. Let's hope it's sharp. Yes. There we go. Okay, that's the 125. Let's check it with a screw. That's slightly proud, so I'll take it another ten thousandths. Okay, so that was another ten. So 135 is what I went. That's the ticket. All right, 135 it is. Okay, one down and three to go. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is since this is down on a machined surface here, the height should be okay. So when I put this over here, um, let's see, I know it, that's what I was going to do. I was going to move it, move this thing, slide it over and then move the whole table over. So we'll do this, tighten it up. And now we'll move this whole table this way. There we go. Now I'll put the drill bit back in, line it up, then stick that back in and cut her on down. All right, guys. So now, got that baby on there, and um, I'm quite pleased. Now I, all I have to do is shape everything to final dimensions right here on the shaper, and I've got myself jaws. I wish I had some plans to know exactly, you know, the blueprints on here to know exactly what the sizes are supposed to be but oh that's not bad that's not bad at all so I think that fixed jaw I might open up the hole a little bit more all right anyway let's get uh, the top and the sides squared up well would you look at that I went and uh, Opened up the little hole down there so I had a little bit more adjustment and just set it down fully on there and yikes, that is yikes, beautiful, just beautiful. So now I need to just get the sides trimmed up and uh, color this one done. Well here goes my very first vertical cut. Wish me luck. First vertical pass, I'd call it success. That's almost like a mirror. Okay, switching to the other side. I don't know if that cutter is going to clear. We'll see. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but let's give it a shot. Try to find another tool. Alright, let's see if this will work. This is about to foul onto the other part, so I'm going to stop good little over an eighth of an inch that needs to go down so I gotta figure that out what to do with that
Okay, now it's time to heat treat not only the, the jaws, but also I'm going to anneal the rest of that leaf spring. And that's just in case I uh, use, you know, machine any more of that. I'll have it already annealed. Okay, guys, as I am editing this video, I noticed something down here that just didn't fit. I'm about to go into my heat treating, but then I see my son, and uh, it just didn't make sense. But I'll show you why. So, Jayster1963 has left his camcorder in the possession of his two sons. Hi. And, uh, Dad, if you're watching this, you should definitely put this in the video and also subscribe to the Random Bros. Indeed. Anything you want to say else? Like the videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, is, this has got 32 times uh, digital zo optical zoom and 53 times digital zoom. That's not bad. That's not good, bad stats, but this thing is super ancient. It's like a dinosaur. Uh, love you, Dad. Love you, Dad. I hope you really see this because Jayster1963, look out. Uh, Jayster1963, we're coming for you. Stop. <laughs> I can't believe neither one of them said anything. It has been months, probably five or six months since I've touched this video. And uh, they both kept quiet. I had no idea they had done this. Anyway, nice job, fellas. I'm going to quench it right there in. Add a little bit of motor oil left over. It's warm out here today, about 80 degrees, so hopefully that'll quench well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this baby started. Now that my boys doing that to me is kind of funny in the sense they always want me to promote their channel. But the thing is, as I tell them, the people that watch my stuff are not going to watch your stuff. It's two different demographics, but uh, they uh, they keep on saying to you know ask people to subscribe to their channel. So they got me. Actually, I'm a little shocked. This is the first time I'm doing heat treatment on how long it took for that to to cool in there, but I guess it's, I don't have a huge volume of oil and that's probably why it took quite a long time to cool down. And so I anneal the rest of the leaf spring just in case I want to make something else out of it later. It hardened up. So now I'm going to kneel it in my little oven. All right. Now they're, they have been in there for two hours at 400 degrees. And why two? I just saw some other YouTuber do that, so I did the same thing. Now I'm going to wire wheel it and clean it up. But on this, somehow there's a couple of raised spots here. Started bringing them down here and on the back side. But on the back side, I took it over to the, the sander there and knocked that off. So I think I'll just do that. Just a quick little light sanding on it and we'll get them on the machine. You can see those high spots there. I don't know what that is, whether some of the um, scales stayed on it in those patterns, but again, that's just lightly sanding it. I'll continue to sand it. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I had a great time making these uh, Shaper Vice Jaws. Uh, also, I've got three more videos coming up on the side projects. There were so many side projects to make this, get the Shaper in tune up to making these jaws that 
it made the video too long. So three more videos coming out with just the side projects. Also, lessons learned. Um, watch where you leave your camera. <laughs> My boys really pranked me with that one. Uh, and they kept quiet for months. It's been like five or six months since I uh, shot this video. And uh, they, <laughs> they got me. My sister would do pranks like that with my still camera. Uh, she, if I ever left it out and she got it, she would take crazy pictures like uh, close-ups of her cat's butt. And so when I'd get my uh, prints back, uh, I would look at that and know my sister had got my camera. Uh, also, now back to the other stuff, tool geometry. I learned a lot on that. The uh, tool geometry uh, plays a really big part on how this machine works. I love it. I can't wait to use it more. And so I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you on the next Journey to Journeyman.